Hi, I'm Livestrong GM Jess Barron, and thank you for joining us today for our Everyday Health Heroes Workout with Olymp USA Olympic gold medalist, Sean Johnson. Thank you. Hey guys. What's up? So Sean, this is a pretty big event for us, and the editors of Livestrong and I wanted to ask you, what do you do before a big event, say a gymnastics meet, a big interview, what do you do to calm your nerves and anxiety if you have that? Honestly, try not to think about it too much. Um, I feel like with the Olympics, with competitions, with anything, the more you think about it, the more you get in your head, the more nervous you get. So for me, it was always trying to stay normal, trying to talk to my parents, now talk to my husband, you know, surf Instagram, whatever it is to take your mind off of, you know, what you're getting ready to do. Just anything to calm you down. So surfing Instagram is something that makes you <laughs> yeah. feel a bit better. It distracts me. It distracts me. <laughs> sometimes yeah. I have a bad day when I look at all my friends on Instagram, but sometimes exactly. it brings me a good day. Yes. Uh -huh. You have said, like many of the women out there and many of these women today, that you felt a lot of pressure to look a certain way. And back when you were your 16-year-old self, now that you're you today, could, what would you say if you could go back to her oh and gosh. give her some advice about body image? <laughs> if I could go back to my 16-year-old self, I would just say stop trying so hard. Um, I feel like as a 16-year-old, as an Olympian, as a gymnast, as anybody in modern-day society and business, we're driven by perfectionism. I mean, with gymnastics, it was all about reaching that perfect 10. The, the more perfect you could be, the better. And it just was never enough. I mean, whether it was a score that wasn't a perfect 10, whether it was a coach or a judge saying you need to do a little bit more, I just got obsessed with this idea that I had to be perfect in everyone's mind. So I had to look a certain way, I had to act a certain way, I had to wear the right thing, I had to do my hair the right way. I remember, you know, painfully agonizing over like my makeup the day of the Olympics. It was like, what if the judge doesn't like my makeup? You know, it was all these different things and it was, it was silly and it came down to my body and I, I didn't look like another gymnast so I thought they were going to deduct me and I just wish I could go back and be like, just stop trying so hard because I was doing so well and I spent so much time trying to be someone else whereas now it's like, just, just be you, put all your effort into being you and being different and things are just so much easier. Speaking of advice, what is the best career advice that anyone's ever given you and who was it? Uh, best career advice anyone's ever given me was probably my mom and I don't think she even knew she was giving me career advice and it was probably when I was like six years old but I remember coming home one day from school and I was crying because of some drama on like the playground and I was like people are making fun of my name because it's like a boy's name and they're making fun that I have biceps and a six pack because they think I'm a boy and all this stuff. and. I remember her telling me at six that I needed to be unique and be different because that's how I was made and I wasn't supposed to be like anyone else. And I feel like transferring that into career advice, I had gotten really caught up after the Olympics in doing what everybody told me to do. They said it makes sense for you to go do this. It makes sense for you to try acting. It makes sense for you to do this next step. And I got caught up doing what other people wanted instead of what I wanted. And what I wanted was to do something completely different and be different than everyone else, but I didn't think it was the right thing to do. And so when I finally did that and took the risk, I was just so much happier and so much more successful in doing what I knew what I was supposed to do rather than what someone else was saying. And now this fall, you are hosting CNBC's Adventure <laughs> Capitalist, which yes. is super cool. Thank you. And it seems like you're going to hear a lot of great ideas on there. Many, many women out there are starting their own businesses, and it's something we're so excited at Livestrong to be seeing happening. What advice would you give to a female entrepreneur who is wanting to take the plunge but might be holding back a little bit? Um, just do it. I mean, honestly, with all of these, so Adventure Capitalist, it was essentially Shark Tank. We had these entrepreneurs pitching products to us. We would go out and test it in like the elements, whether it was in Banff, Canada, in the mountains, or jumping through ice holes and lakes. It was crazy things, but we were testing out people's products that they believed in. And it didn't matter what entrepreneur stood in front of me. The one thing that like really struck me and gave me a great first impression was confidence. If someone had confidence in themselves and confidence in their product, I had more confidence in them. And even if it was the best product on the entire show, if they didn't believe in it, I didn't believe in them. So I think with anybody trying to take a, a step in a different direction and they're starting their own business, doing more entrepreneurial things, just have confidence that you can do it. If you don't believe in yourself to start, then nobody else will. So it just it starts with it uh, starts from within. 
as cheesy as that sounds. Tell us about, our uh, designer Gracie here actually wanted to know this question about what your favorite workouts are and what we can expect in the workout that you're leading us in today. Yeah, well, I no longer have a six pack, um, <laughs> intentionally. I always said in gymnastics, I was so obsessive about having that perfect body that I think the greatest thing for my health now is just to be normal and do everything in moderation. I have, I drink wine, I have ice cream, I celebrate, you know, food, which I love. Um, but for me, with workouts anymore, I just do what I love. Honestly, consistency is a huge important factor in fitness and keeping consistent with a workout. But I think consistency is just in your mind more than anything. I think you can do a different workout every day and still be successful. So for me, I, I do classes. I do Barry's Boot Camp, Soul Cycle, a new CrossFit workout that my husband's obsessed with. Mm -hmm. um, we go on hikes, we run. I, I try to do a little bit of everything. I get bored very, very easily. Um, so for the workout today, I wasn't sure you know, what I would get. And I don't want to do anything too miserable. So we're doing like a HIT workout like a cardio circuit almost. It won't be too cardio intensive, I promise. Um, I didn't put any push-ups in there. I hate push-ups. Um, but I do a lot of like high intensity interval training. That's kind of like my favorite thing to do. So a few circuits, a few partner workouts if you want. Um, so yeah, a few different things. Was there anything that you would look to when you were about to do one of um, your gymnastics meets that would give you inspiration and or that you look today when you need creative inspiration? Because we're all looking for creative inspiration in our lives. What is something that you look to when you need that inspiration? Uh, looking for inspiration? I don't know. I feel like I find inspiration all over. But another cheesy thing, I love watching those like super cheesy, super like Rocky inspired motivational videos on YouTube. Um, you know the ones where they like put the quotes of Rocky and LeBron and like Michael Jordan and all these things together and put some crazy, you know, music behind it. It's like you can do anything, you know. <laughs> For some reason, those make me feel like I can run through a brick wall. So whenever I need motivation to like go to a workout or do something creative, I always watch one of those. So just cheesy. What's the last great book that you've read that either inspired you or you just thought was really meant something to you? Um, it wasn't the last one I read, but it's one of my favorite that I remember reading um, when I was like 14 years old, and I've reread re it probably a hundred times. It's this book called You Go Girl, and one of my teammates ended up giving it to me, but it's this entire compilation of strong female athletes and their stories, and it's like 400 pages, but it's like each each story is maybe a couple paragraphs, but these, they're like triumphant stories of um, female athletes, some famous, some not, some just everyday women who have gone through some really extraordinary things. And it's like all the things that they've gone through. And it just, I loved, I loved reading it and being able to connect to so many different women on different, you know, from all aspects of life. Looking back at your life, what are the one or two qualities within yourself that had you knowing that you might be, be the great success that you are? Are there things that you saw in yourself that showed how you were going to get the success that you got? Um, that's hard. It's always hard to pick like qualities of yourself. Um, for me, I think one thing that really drove me was I never, I think it's a, it's a good quality and a bad, but I never thought I was good enough. So I remember even being at world championships. It was my very first world championships. I was the team captain. I won four different gold medals. And I remember standing on every single gold medal platform and podium and being given a medal and looking down to the girls next to me and thinking, like, how am I even here? Like, I can't believe I'm competing next to Nastia Lukin. And I'd be wearing a gold medal. And at that time, I feel like if you're wearing a gold medal, you should be saying to yourself, like, wow, I made it. But for me, it was always like, this is a fluke. I need to go back and work a million times harder so this can happen again and be lucky. But it was always that drive of, I want to be good enough to be next to her. And it just kept me motivated. I think the other one was I didn't, I didn't care what people thought. Um, for me, a huge motivator was I always competed with myself to be better. I never competed with the person next to me. And whether a judge gave me a bad score or not, I knew at the end of the day, at the end of the day if I did my best or if I didn't. So whether a judge said I was worthy of a gold medal or a silver, I knew if I was or not. And that, to me, drove me more than anything. What's it like when you're competing for a score against someone who you're actually friends with in real life? Is that something that you experience? Oh, yes. So the hardest part about being a gymnast for the United States on the Olympic team is you compete on a, any given Tuesday 
for the team medal. So you have to work together. And then on Wednesday, you have to compete against your teammate for the same medal. And it's always a lot of drama. It's kind of like mean girls back in the day. You're just like in teenage years again. But um, Nastia, Lucan, and I, we were all around uh, gold and silver medalists, and we are each other's best friends. We somehow found a way to, to be each other's biggest competitors and then turn the competition off and be each other's best friends. And it's very, very difficult to kind of put that competition aside. But I think when you learn to compete with yourself and not someone else, it becomes a lot easier. So especially for women on social media, we're always trying to compete with each other. We're always like, I need more followers. I need to look better. I need to do this. And if you just try to better yourself instead of compete with the person next to you, it gets a lot easier. You have millions of followers on social. Can you tell us a little bit about what it takes to cultivate social media success and what are some of your tips for our other social media influencers that are out here in the audience today? Um, well, I'm still learning, so I don't know. I haven't mastered anything yet. Um, but I think on social media, I think as much as it's a blessing, it's also a curse. I think on social media, you need to know what it is you want to share and what you don't. And I think you need to keep that life separate. Um, I think social media is a place where you can show the world things that you love, but not show all of you. I think we're, social media tends to get a little lax with the next generations. They're thinking that it's okay to show everything. And I think finding kind of your purpose on social media and inviting the world to follow that purpose instead of just follow along with every decision you're going to make on a daily basis, being intentional with it. Who are your heroes and who do you follow also on social? It could be a couple different <laughs> examples for us? Um, my heroes and the people I follow on social media. Um, I'm one of those that dogs are my heroes. I follow every <laughs> dog on social media. Um, I met a dog earlier up there and he couldn't even walk up a hill so I carried him up there. Um, but I follow a lot of dogs and I follow any and every person in kind of like the fitness world. I love watching the transformations. I love watching you know, trainers train other athletes. I love watching athletes being trained and getting ready for another event. I don't know if there's like specific people. I don't really tend to follow like the really high number um, famous people. It's always the ones who don't have as many followers that have these incredible stories that I love to watch. There's one girl, um, I can't even think of her. It's like E. Cook, I think, I don't know. But she was an American Ninja Warrior. And she just had ACL surgery, but she went through her whole story with it, and now she's coming back. And it's just all these inspirational stories I like to follow. What are some of your favorite go-to meals for <laughs> breakfast or for snacks? Or um, for dinners, too. Whatever. Yeah. So my husband and I tend to be pretty boring. We eat the same exact meal every single day. Um, but this morning we do like we do a lot of like skillets in the morning. So we do egg white skillet, or we call it a skillet. I don't know if it's skillet, um, but we do kale, tomatoes, peppers, onions, sometimes bacon chopped up in it, and kind of like an omelet. We had that for breakfast this morning. Dinner is always the same. <laughs> we either cook chicken or fish, sometimes steak, and then we make like a really big kale and vegetable salad. So, and sweet potatoes. We love sweet potatoes. Some of us out here love to um, earn our uh, cheat meals. Oh, yes. What is your Me favorite too. cheat meal? <laughs> uh, favorite cheat meal? Um, I'm a sucker for ice cream. I'm addicted to Halo Top ice cream right now. Or if we do a lot of dairy-free stuff at our house, so one of my favorite dairy-free is um, this like cashew milk ice cream, which I love. Um, the other one that we make is we take bananas and you put a little bit of almond butter on top or peanut butter, and then you dip it in like melted chocolate and then you freeze it and they make the greatest like little bites to eat at the end of the night. What does it mean to you to be a live strong, stronger woman? Um, it's an honor. I, I, I don't know. I feel like I've gone through so much in my career already I'm, and I'm only 25. I feel like I'm just starting. But I've been around so many athletes and women who have struggled through things and overcome things and have so, such inspirational stories. For me to be defined as like a stronger woman, it, it just means that I feel like my story is getting out there and people can relate to it. So it's an honor for me. That's excellent. And we're yeah. so glad to have you be a part of this Thank and to you. lead us all in an exciting HIIT workout. So whether you're at home or whether you're here, get ready for an exciting <laughs> HIIT workout where you're going to work us pretty hard, but not too crazy, right? Not too crazy. I <laughs> all right. Not too crazy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah, Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Guys.